The unbeaten run is now at seven and we are up to 15th in the Skybet League One. Uh, today is an important away day though because it gives Nathan Jones's side the chance to create even more distance between themselves and another team in the relegation zone. And that team is Fleetwood Town and it's a hell of a journey to go up there as Charlton take on a team that has performed well in recent weeks under Charlie Adam. Fleetwood are unbeaten in five, including a very impressive 4-2 win over Wigan at the start of the month. But it's another big game for Nathan Jones' side. And we have a busy pre-show as ever in store for you. Let's take a look at what we've got coming up. We will hear from the main man, Nathan Jones. We'll see what happened when Miles Lieburn went to visit a local school for World Book Day. And we'll take a look at the club's latest signing, Kazenga Loa Loa. And well, welcome to everybody all around the world. And if you haven't yet got your match streaming pass for just £10, please do so. Hopefully we'll carry on a good form and come away from Fleetwood with all three points. Delighted to say uh, that I was in the pundit position, of course, last week. Uh, but I'm handing... I've got it here. Look, I'm handing back over to two greats today. Where are they? <laughs> you were they're coming in. I don't know <laughs> they couldn't make it, so we did. We were able to get <laughs> his uh, brownie. <laughs> How are we, chaps? Good. Yeah, good. Yeah, there's no way you're covering lactic acid build-up, are you, as a pundit? <laughs> Just no way. <laughs> First off, though, I was a pundit sitting in that chair there. How do you feel I was? Good cop, That's bad insane. cop. Yeah. There's no way he's covering lactic acid build up like you did last week. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> I just about remember saying that. <laughs> Liz, the last time we saw you, you were, you were sipping a can of about time, weren't you, when you don't normally drink? Yeah, I'm detox since then. <laughs> <laughs> Only water. <laughs> that was a fun show, I have to say, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, it was brilliant. I'm getting messages even when I went home. People, um, um, bringing up events where they've had a drink with me, so hey, I think I've got... Oh yeah, no, I don't drink, Scotty. <laughs> like, oh. It, it yeah. made the show, obviously, apart from the win, yeah. but it absolutely made the show. Yeah, I just want to... Um, <laughs> do, you, do you want to clarify that? Do you, so, do, 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 you, do you drink or do you not drink, Liz? I just want to apologise to the world. I do have a beer every now and then. <laughs> okay. What I meant to say is I don't really drink beer. So, yeah, my apologies for the, for the wording I used. <laughs> oh, you're so, uh, you don't only drink beer. OK, yeah. that's what it is. Um, if anyone's seen Kevin Lisby drinking no, beer, go. please get your WhatsApps in. Yeah, yeah, yeah all day long. knew it. OK, uh, let, let's talk about the football now, shall we? And, and look, I have to say, Brown, it's been a, a midweek with no Charlton game. In fact, no, let's ask you, how's your week been? You all right? <laughs> no, it's been horrific, but we can't go into it. <laughs> it's been, it's been, yeah, it's been a tough week, if I'm honest. Yeah, behind the... Behind the smiley face is a is a grim week. Yeah. Behind behind those false teeth. <laughs> yeah, behind, yeah. Those, behind <laughs> the false gnashers and the, and the two rubbish knees. It's been a it's been a tough week. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually do know the week he's had, and yeah, we don't want to talk about it. So let's move swiftly on, shall we? Look, it is unbeaten in seven though, and we and we do go into today's game with a lot of optimism, don't we? And it's it's not a feeling we've had many times this season, or perhaps even over the last couple of seasons. No. I think, I think it's fair to say that, that, that at times it's been a bit of a slog, hasn't it, for, for everybody associated with the club in terms of where we've been at, fighting at the wrong end at times of the table. But things are certainly looking like they're on the up and, and, and it is a positive time. And I think the Derby game was the one where we got that, you know, Kroy pops up with a wonderful finish, you win it 2-1. And that was the real first sort of light at the end of the tunnel that we were coming away from. What felt like bottom, it felt like we've sort of bottomed out, mm. if you like, and and the runs continuing. So long may it can you know go up, go on, and we've got another really good opportunity here. I know you've just said they're in quite good form, but actually just statistically across the season, they're they're not in a great place. They have had just quite a, a mini revival over the last month or so, but they're still fighting for their lives. And across the season, they've been pretty poor, and we'll get into the statistics of it later. But I see us if we get anything like how we've been playing today, we, sh we should get a result. You're very brave. You said statistics twice. Yes. I try not to say that word <laughs> on air ever because I, I never can normally say it properly. Liz, yeah. I have to say, though, um, it has been a real change under Nathan, hasn't it? And it has been sustained as well. What, what do you put that down to? Yeah, I, I put it down to the first game I watched him play. I think the, the energy he brought on that side sort of reflected how he wanted his team to play. Um, and I felt like watching the watching the game itself, I felt like the team responded to the energy he had on the side and and the demands he wanted and the standards that he, he set for his team. And 
Um, it's obviously worked because obviously we're, we're going on this unbeaten run. But as me and Brownie spoke about, I just like the fact that he passes the ball forward. I like the fact that our strikers are getting touches of the ball. Our strikers are scoring goals and we look dangerous. And also we're playing in the opposition's half quite high up the field. And, and, and I, I quite appreciate that, especially in League One, where it's a difficult league. If you start playing from the back too much and you've got defenders that don't really want to be doing it, but are doing it because the manager asked them to do it and then they're, they're uncomfortable with it and then they make mistakes and all of a sudden your form goes down and, um, and, and then people start losing form. So at the moment, I love the fact that we're playing in the opposition half and I think that's a, a, a key element to why we're doing well at the moment. Here, here. Great answer. We're so you can't over. come out with something definitely like that. over, though. We may well be over, but I'm still going to ask a couple more questions. <laughs> uh, look, you know, it, it's been it's been a lot of fixtures for, for for Nathan to deal with. I think it's been a week to breathe. While you've been fighting fires in the Brown household, you know, how, how do you feel? How do you feel Nathan's been, <laughs> been dealing with this week? Yeah, I think look, he is a really positive guy. He's come out, and he has to be, and he's trying to sell something to this squad not just for the back end of this year, but moving forward into the summer. And he's, he's almost saying to these guys, come with me, you know, and I'll, I'll find you out if you don't want to between now and the end of the season. But trust me, come with me. This is going to be a good journey. And he comes out and he's ultra positive. There's one or two things. I, I, I thought we were poor for 25 minutes against mm. we try. It looked like we changed style, like we tried to play out. That's it, acid. You build up, yeah, lot we, of travelling, we late nights. We tired, late yeah, nights, absolutely. yeah. And it, it just looked like it didn't work, but... We've been there before and we've just watched the team continue to do it across a 90 minute period and, and draw or lose. Something changed after 20, 25 minutes. We went a bit longer. We, we condensed play into the opposition half and we did better. Mm. You know, and he's come out in his interview and he's been really positive again. You know, and, I, and, and, and the sell is a good sell. I think the players are buying into it. I get the feeling from the performances I've seen where he's condensed the, you know, from front to back, it's easier to press as a group and they look like they're working harder for each other. You know, it, it wasn't really rocket science in terms of where we were at and where we've gone, but you've still got to pull off the results. You've still, he's made some brave calls in terms of the players he's put in. You know, Roy Anderson, I don't think anyone would have put at the top of, uh, you know, the, 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 the three-man midfield and he's been brilliant, absolutely outstanding. We're definitely over now. Yeah. Um, one final thing, though. What, what, what did you like um, as a player? Did you like the sort of Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, or did you like the, the Saturday and then kind of rest, not necessarily rest a bit, because training is still full on? But it, For me, it depends if I was doing well, if the team was doing well. If I've scored on a Saturday, the, the, you want a game straight away, you want a game Tuesday. Um, if, you, if you have a bad game or the team has a bad game, you may want to reflect on it, you may want to work on a few things and, and adjust a, a few things. So. Um, you want that week break, but I think the way the team's going at the moment, I'm sure all these lads now will want to play as much as possible. And um, I think, as Brownie said, I think everyone's buying into what he's doing and what he's selling. So that's really important as well. And I think we're, we're looking more probably now for next season than this season, mm. um, who, he's, who he can trust, who he can't trust. And um, yeah, I, I, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer in if you're winning playing games, and as I say, if you're not having a bad time, maybe get on that training field, um, field and and start working on a few things. Yeah, well, at least he has had time, even though we are in a good vein of form at the moment, he has had time to work on that perhaps he hasn't done uh, because he's just been so manic since he's come in. OK, yeah, plenty more to talk about, but let's hear from the manager now, Nathan Jones, who spoke to the press earlier this week. Hi, Nathan. Uh, seven unbeaten now, uh, and your first victory at the Valley was a massive positive, of course. Uh, you were unhappy afterwards, uh, with certain aspects, uh, um, particularly defensively. Was that down to Carlisle making it difficult for us or a symptom of the heavy fixture list we've spoken about? No, I thought it was lack of concentration. I thought the second goal, first goal is an element of fortune to it. It's a looping one. We were, you know, we were touch tight. I would like us to defend better. But, but the second one's definitely is defending that we, we've, got to, we've got to be better at. But look, I don't want it to be a negative because there was 95% of the, of the performance was magnificent. I mean, really, really magnificent. How we moved the ball, the amount and the volume of chances, good chances, structure, everything we've worked on, they, they were outstanding. They really were. And we're I, I don't want to be disrespectful because Carlisle are in their own situation and stuff, but that wasn't a free-two game and that's the frustrating thing for me. Because, But everything else, you know, when I watched it back especially and we've just debriefed now and, and stuff, so, so pleased with so much. We get still lots of improvement, but if we put in that level of performance week in, week out and then tweak a few things defensively, we're, we're going to be a difficult team to play against. 
and after Saturday's win and the results elsewhere this week, um, it means we can't be overhauled by the teams below us that had games in hand prior to that. Um, did that figure in your thoughts since your arrival, no. or uh, is it, you know, because our destiny's in our own hands? It, it, everything's about us. Like if we do what we do, and we, you know, we don't want to be reliant on anyone else. Like, it's nice that people are not not winning games below us, but we have to start looking at different different things, and we, we we've got to take care of our own. We can't be relying on people. You know, I've always been a big believer that. Um, you, you, you control your own destiny. Everything's God's will, and you control. You know, you, you control and do what you can for for your own self. Then everything else is is secondary. But look, I I, um, I watched the only game I watched in midweek was was the Fleetwood Bristol Rovers game because that's that was relevant to us. And and, and apart from that, look, I, I, it's, it's no concern what others do. Cameo that Conor Wickham uh, gave us on, on Saturday showed us uh, why you brought him in to the club. Uh, Overhead kicks aside, uh, you must have been delighted with that little performance. Well, look, he, he contributed. He didn't contribute massively, but he contributed and he came on and he gives us something different. So we know that we've got a bit more size and presence up there with the the runners and the pace and the movement that and the others bring. So we we need a balance. You know, obviously we're we're we're, we're still waiting for Chucks to to be fully fit, and, and and when we have that, then we've got real you know potency in the front areas. It's. You know, with with Lieben and and Aniki not being fit, that limits the size we got and the presence, if you like, or the the vertical presence, if you if if, if you like, that that we don't have. But we have so much, so many other things, so many other attributes. So having those in the side just adds adds to us, and that's what we're 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 really pleased with. You mentioned bringing Connor in is is a, you know, partially because of the injury situation. With that, um, how's the squad generally? And, and uh, Lloyd Jones specifically, of course, because he missed the last. Yeah, game. very good, very good. We pulled Lloyd out because we had Heck coming back, and we obviously play with three centre halves and and stuff anyway. And we had a sim way that, that can fill in and and things. So um, Lloyd Lloyd just had a little niggle that we've just sorted out. So he needed an injection, like a, a, a you know a. a, a, a an easy injection, so we managed to give it to him and then free him up so he could train fully this week. I think one of the things that fans will be um, noting since since you've arrived is that prior to your arrival, with the injuries that we've had, like with uh, Chucks, with uh, with Lloyd and uh, and others, that would have hurt us a lot in 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 the past. Whereas now it seems to be that uh, the players are coming in and stepping in and doing doing what you're asking. Oh, okay, everyone's been magnificent since I've come in. The players need all the credit. I know it's a cliche of managers like you know. But they have. I mean, everything I've dem and I've demanded from them. I haven't asked them to do stuff. I've demanded stuff from them, and they've they've been magnificent on a on a daily basis. They give me everything. They take on board the intelligence levels they've shown, the humility, the desire for work rate, and then the camaraderie. And you know, it's a wonderful place. You know, I, I, I love being here, and they've made my life far easier. But. If, if, I, if I'm honest, there's a good group of players here that want to learn, want to get better. And we're nowhere near where we want to be, nowhere near, but we're starting to lay a foundation. You, I've got to mention, you asked, uh, well, sorry, you mentioned post match um, after Saturday that you hope to have an additional player coming in. Can you give us any updates? On yeah, we've agreed with Kazenga um, uh, We're just waiting for international clearance to see whether he'd be involved in the weekend, but it's a player I've worked with over a number of years, a player I worked with at Brighton where you know he was magnificent, then he came in. And did a similar job for me at um, at Luton, and he's someone that we haven't got here. We got in wide areas. We have like Tyrese Campbell is probably the only natural one, um, but we wanted to have that option. So like I know Kazenga very well. Kazenga has just just left Greece, so it, it was an ideal opportunity. In terms of fitness, is he up to speed and can play straight away, or does he need uh, needs some training first? He's one of those physical phenomenons that. You could chuck him. You could chuck him on the moon for a year, and he'd come back and be able to be potent for for a number, for for for, for a certain amount of minutes. And that's the type of athlete he is. Great lad, fantastic player, has had a real good career. And uh, and and I I always enjoy working with him. So he makes us as a group, as a club, and 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 hopefully he's an eleven better. Fleetwood up next uh, on Saturday. Another club fighting for survival, and they've proven to be a tough team. It's a tough team to beat under Charlie Adam. Um, only two defeats in the last ten. What sort of contest are you expecting? Uh, exactly that. Really tough. I mean, the pitch is, is a bit rustic up there, like in, in in terms of stuff. So it'll be a difficult game with the, with the conditions. But it'll be a difficult game. They're, they're in decent form. As I said, I've watched them. They, they were down to ten men after 68 minutes against Stevenage, and well, I won't say the best chance, but I had a really good chance to have, to have won it. Um, they're, they'll be well drilled under him. I know Charlie very well. Um, so yeah, but, and and they're difficult, and it's always a difficult place to go to at the best of times. But you know, uh, in the recent form they've been in, um, it, it'll be a tough game. But 
obviously, I, I'm sure that they'll be thinking exactly the same. And finally for me, the wing game has just been called off. Do you see that as a chance to recharge batteries or uh, a bit of a pain because of the congestion it's going to bring a bit further down? I see it as a pain because we're in good form and, and everything. I, I, you know, I, I would have preferred to have, to have found a way around it in terms of juggling and maybe seeing who we... Because we would have had people missing, but I, I, I would have utilised the squad because I think it's just important to keep a bit of momentum. I think that... You know, having a two-week break now, we don't need it. Not this stage of the career, of the season. Not with there being five weeks of the season left, we don't need a two-week break. You know what I mean? What we need is just continuity. So it's a bit, it's a bit strange, um, but it is what it is. It is what it is. But I've got to be honest with you, Brownie. I find it strange as well. And I think Nathan's absolutely nailed it there. We're almost at the end of the season. Two teams that, well, certainly for Wigan anyway, they're not going to go up. They're not going to go down. Frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would. I don't know why it's been cancelled. Is the, is the truth of it? I get it done. You've gone from a Saturday afternoon to a Tuesday night, which I don't think any player would prefer to play on a Tuesday night. If I'm honest, it's, you've got the travelling down, playing the game. You're getting back really late the next morning. That knocks the next day out. If you've got a wife and kids at home, <laughs> you're up early. <laughs> you know, with yeah. Well, we don't have to worry about that as such, do they? But. Well, no, they no, do. They, they do, do yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, it's, I'm it's, saying for Wigan, it's, yeah. I don't un but understand it. Do, do you think it's almost the case, Liz, that if we were at the bottom and had lost three on the spin, they'd say, yeah, let's get the game in as soon as possible. Now they're seeing us playing well and thinking, actually, we're trying to try and avoid them. But it, you, you're just delaying the game, aren't you? Nothing I don't know why you don't consult the clubs. Just speak to each club and say, are you comfortable playing this game? And if both clubs want to play it, just play it. Um, as but we're going to say they're not. We're going to say they're not comfortable. We don't oh, get a choice. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to have like four, four internationals or five. Yeah. Anyway. If you look, at, if you look at the table as it is, you just play the game in it. You just, just play the game, and um, as you say, you don't want to start picking up silly injuries because you're playing at a, a ridiculous time and um, with five weeks left of the season with nothing on it. Just play the game. We've just been talking about going Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, and that's going to be two weeks off, yeah. six weeks left of the season. It's, yeah, it's ridiculous and it's a shame. And, and a game that we're going to miss, of course, aren't we, for different we reasons? Will. We will. We both took the week off there thinking we might miss, might, just might miss one game. Oh, well done, going to miss two now. Unfortunately, we will miss that, but uh, yeah. Charlton TV will continue, of course. Let's have a look at the team, shall we? Uh, this picks by Nathan today. Uh, unchanged, perhaps unsurprisingly, just one change on the bench. Uh, Connor Wickham's out. Loire Loire is in. So, Brandy, what are you thinking? Um, you know, we're, we're still conceding goals, aren't we? But yeah. that's something defensively you've got to sort out. But basically, he wants that consistency. Yeah, I mean, we're one clean sheet in 26, but we've only conceded five in the last five. So that's a goal a game, which is, isn't a disaster. If you headed, if you sort of aimed for that at the start of the season, 46 against across the year, you'd be over the moon. So in, sh in, in terms of short term, we're not conceding too many goals. But um, it's an issue. Still takes us two to win a game. Well, three, Carlo. So it's like, yeah. and he addressed it there, Nathan. He said, uh, that's something we have to improve on. We have to get better. And it's an area that I'm sure over the summer will be looked at um, and, and worked on pre-season. But in terms of where we're at results-wise, three wins, two draws, no losses in the last five. It's a great return. It puts us up into uh, fourth in the form guide, mm -hmm. you know, which, which six weeks ago, would have been hard to predict. So, you know, confidence and morale should be much higher. The training ground should be a much better place to be. Uh, and that's one thing you can't measure, you know, is, is the confidence of a side. And it should be confident. And, and I think their, their short-term form guide's a bit misleading. One win in eight, Scotty, 23rd in home form across the season. You know, I think this is a place we should be looking at to go and get a result, however difficult people might think going to Fleetwood is, I think this is one when you're in good form yourself, you should be looking to win. Oh, at the time I was there, it was actually a, a nice little stadium and the pitch was decent as well. So you forget the fact you're in Fleetwood, it's uh, it decent conditions. And in terms of the front two, Liz, you know, how, how do you see them shaping up? I mean, Dan's doing extremely well at the moment, isn't he? And, and Alfie's back in form against Scotty. Yeah, I think they, they both are now. And I think there's a, even the last game I watched, there seems to be a, a real good understanding between between them both, who comes short and who, who goes long. I think that seemed to be a, an issue for a long while. Sometimes you, you, I saw May making runs in behind and I saw Kanye coming in. I think they've sort of identified their strengths now. And, and I think the managers probably more importantly said, look, this is what you're good at. This is what you're good at, do it. Mm. Um, and I think the longer you play alongside someone as a two, I love seeing two strikers. It um, gives me goosebumps to see, you always see one strikers now. To see two strikers now, combining and understanding each other and also getting goals as well, um, contributing to help winning games. So, yeah, that's really good at the moment. 
the pitch is looking perhaps a, a little bit dry in, in places, <laughs> but it's rustic, he described it as, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> did, did it's a good way of saying it. Okay, well, that means it's poor. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, it's yeah, as it is. You know, let's, let's, let's it do it needs to be treated. Media translation for everybody. Pitch isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're here for, isn't it? To translate these. Uh... <laughs> okay, well, there the lads are training at the moment. Uh, kick off, what are we? Uh, less, only less than, what, 24 minutes away. Uh, let's talk about the women's team now, though, shall we? Because they were back in action after a long break on Sunday but despite dominating proceedings lost 1-0 to Reading they are back on the road tomorrow away to Durham and be looking to get back to winning ways Karen Hills' side will then be back at the Valley for the upcoming game against London City Lionesses on March the 24th and supporters with a men's first team season ticket can attend that game for free so make sure you're here next Sunday it's the first of three big games at the Valley to end the season against London City Lionesses. Then Birmingham City visits on March the 31st before a potential thrilling season finale against Southampton Sunday, April the 28th. Uh, Brownie, how much of a dent would that loss to Reading be, do you feel? Yeah, it's a bit of a blow. We sort of touched on it last week about you know the golf match play type situation where when the team ahead of you has played one, does add a little bit of pressure, and you know the games. I'm not. I'd rather have points on the board, mm. and we've slipped up. But it's far from over. It's still very, very tight up there. You know, I'm, I'm going to attend next Sunday. I'm going to work with Charlotte on uh, on summarising that game, and I look forward to watching it. But certainly, we get back to winning ways as soon as possible to to maintain the pressure from our perspective. Liz, it, it wasn't easy, was it, for Karen Hill's side because they had a month out because of the international break and waterlogged pitches as well, and. It, they need to get back on track tomorrow. It's still not easy, but you stopped. We talked about having yeah, a one yeah. week off with yeah, the, the men's side. We, They've had a month off. Yeah, we actually spoke about the last time we was there mm. about um, the effects of, of not playing games and, and how it would affect the team. And listen, they've, they've lost one game. I think we've got to obviously push that to the side now. And I think this is the pressure part of the season. This is the part of the season where everyone sort of has to step up and and perform. So, uh, listen, uh, you, you, uh, for me, you try and get that, that loss out of the way and I think you just, as Brandy said, you're trying to have a good end to the season and get some wins on the board. Mm. Good luck to Charles and Athletic women tomorrow and make sure you get down to the Valley and cheer them on, on next Sunday as well. OK, now Miles Lieburn visited a local school for World Book Day early this month. Let's take a look. This afternoon we've had Miles uh, from Charlton Athletic in to the school um, just to help promote World Book Day and um, just act as a really inspiring figure for some of our children. As part of our Premier League Primary Stars programme, we've used um, the Premier League values um, to, get, to get across to the children how important it is to be inspired, to be ambitious, to be fair and to be connected. Um, so that's what we've been doing here today as part of the handing out the free books as well that come through the National Literacy Trust. In my job now, where I do, I've got to read loads of stuff and yeah, when I was young I used to love reading all the World Cup books and all that stuff, but also like adventure books and yeah, reading is just massive, especially from a young age because that's when you learn the best, so it's important to embed it. He was unbelievable with the children, um, I think he warmed up to it eventually, he started talking about things that he likes to enjoy reading. Um, some of the children had some great questions for him um, and it was great to see him um, as part of the, the workshop that we did, handing out some books and, and obviously telling the children how much he likes to read and what he has to read as part of being a professional footballer. I think Miles did a really fantastic job of breaking some of the stereotypes around um, you know, who accesses books and, uh, and reading um, and he did a really good job of emphasising the importance of reading in, in all professions including football as well. And, I think some of our children might think reading is something that we kind of insist on, but there's not necessarily a purpose for it uh, beyond the school gates. And he did a, a fantastic job of emphasising the importance of, of reading it in the real world as well. I didn't realise how much of uh, an impact like, we have in this role and, and see how I inspire the kids because they're all like gasping and saying, wow, like, especially you're so tall and they, they knew who I was. And, yeah, it's nice to, nice to see that some people, you see me as like an idol of some sort and, and, and I inspire people. Off our own accord, we would never have been able to kind of facilitate such a, a fantastic visit. Um, but through our, uh, our close partnership with the Trust, we are able to do um, a range of really fantastic activities, i.e. What, what we had experienced today um, and, and other events as well. Well, Brownie, more good workers ever from uh, CACT, but as we sort of want to discuss here. Let's stay topical, shall we? Your favourite book? 
Favourite book. Favourite book. Favourite book. <laughs> You've changed that from rehearsal. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. What, no, did he say what was the last book you read? I didn't no, say no, that. No, I no, never no, said no, that. No, no, Doesn't no, it just go no, to no, show you don't listen? No wonder Mrs B is like that with you. Honestly. Oh, dear. What is your favourite book translate to from here to there? The last book you read. I couldn't put down and I just kept reading until it was The Da Vinci Code. It was 28 years ago. It was a long time ago, Scotty. Yeah, yeah. So that was the last one I couldn't put down. But I've read a couple of football books since. Um, uh, and, and to be honest with you, that yeah, there's standard stuff in it. You read them and you just plough through them and they're not too exciting and you don't learn too much. But is Steve Brown autobiography coming out soon? I've, I've, soon? I got approached many years ago about a Charlton one and me being me I just went oh no I'm all right, Tom. <laughs> it's not really like a, a f family fun day book is it? You're, you're, Which one? Well, we're talking Brown, about, yeah, I think we want to talk about what, like, Spider-Man and, Spider and you're talking about, like, all for that's a comic. kids. Yeah, but... Da Vinci, imagine, imagine if Miles had gone in there saying, lads, girls, we read the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> 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 Just no. keep it light. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did, I did ask the question, no, yeah. what was your favourite yeah, book? Yeah, but okay. you've got to change it to the last one you read. I used to love Roald Dahl as a kid, and, and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Great Glass Elevator, Danny Champion of the World, James and the Chime for Peach, fantastic Mr Fox. All that as well, but but I must admit I'm not a big reader, um, and the I ones I read now are, love, are kind of football yeah, autobiographies. Yeah, podcast, documentary. I love all yeah. that, um, but to sit down and read, um, no, nah, not for me. Not for me. It takes a long that's, time. That's, that it? is your yeah, answer. No, no, yeah. Not for yeah. me. Okay. I'm okay. Out. <laughs> um, I'm out. Can, can I ask it? You were just cheek cheekily telling me a story that you didn't think we'd be going out on air, and, and now he's going to go out on air. <laughs> nothing you see so what, there. No, nothing at all. <laughs> and the mic's never off. It was a enough. friendly conversation. I was going to say we're always listening, but he doesn't listen, you know. Um, Go on, say what you're saying. You, you, no, no, you work no, at the school, didn't obviously you? Obviously I work. <laughs> it's too late now. I yeah, know, exactly. No, obviously I work at the school and they asked some of the, the teachers to come in and, and, and dress up as a, a character of a, of a book. So obviously I've come in my, my Lisby top. Extra large, by the way, the extra large one, because you want to make it light, you want to be fun. And yeah, it just came as myself as a, a former Premiership player. A superhero. Yeah, a superhero to many and none. So yeah, that was fun. Did you, it, it was, did you it, come in blowing your own trumpet? Pat <laughs> <laughs> yourself and, on the back. I had a hat trick ball as well. Mum used to say that to me. Here he goes. Here he goes. <laughs> Someone played football. <laughs> you, you can't say anything positive no, about that. No, 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 no. You can't. <laughs> okay, trying to move on. I mean, just mention about, about Miles actually. But he, Great to see him out here, for, yeah, you know, yeah. wouldn't it? The moment he gets fit and stays fit as well. Yeah, and, and it's been a frustrating time, right? You know, because we, we would love to have seen him part of this team this year. And every time he gets into his stride and he's starting to look really good, uh, you get this. He's had a couple of injuries now that have kept him out a few months. And, yeah, I, I, it must be really frustrating for him. There's nothing worse, is there? And we've all been there, all three of us, where you're in that gym by yourself yeah. and you're watching the team go out you're watching them train and you're working away and you can't wait to get back out there's nothing worse mm. been a long time since you've been in the gym by yourself <laughs> oh, <laughs> peloton mate oh, let me tell you now i get off the peloton every day and my daughter started coming with me and i go what do you get alicia and she goes tells me a miles and i go Pfft. <laughs> Gee, are you even trying? And, that, and that's the two plastic knees now Pla as well. Two, two <laughs> terrible knees and I'm still smashing it. Do you know there was a charity thing the other week, right? And a woman come in and she team. said, we're, we're taking everyone's mileage and we're put, giving a penny uh, you know, per mile for charity. And it went round the room and it was like four miles. five. And I'm sitting there going, I'm like 15 in the same half hour. You and, it, and I, yeah, and it got to and I went 14. And, and you could hear everyone go, everyone look at you go, Absolutely no, no chance. Look, John, you yeah. absolutely look lying. at the state of yeah, you yeah, saying yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, a big mound of sweat around my bike. <laughs> He's never done 14 miles. Uh, before we move on, let's go to the WhatsApps quickly. Uh, we've got one here. Uh, can you send out a shout out to my girlfriend Holly, who has finally stayed up with me in Perth, Australia, late, ready for the game? And that's Ooh. from Ben. Fair play, Paul, yeah. Ben and Holly. <laughs> Someone who's got young kids will know. <laughs> There's a programme out there. But um, listen, great stuff. Uh, let's move on now, shall we? Uh, on to some updates. And our upcoming game against Wigan has been postponed due to international call-ups. A new date for the game has been confirmed. Tuesday, 
April the 9th and tickets for the initial game will remain valid. Now, a big event for all the family is coming up on Wednesday, April the 3rd, between 12 and 4 p.m. here at the Valley. A free family fun day is going to run in the West Stand car park with local vendors on site as part of the food and drink offering. The event is open to all with no registration required. Bring all your family to meet the men's, women and men's and women's first team and enjoy a variety of activities, including face painting, mini football games and a fun fair of attractions. Brandon, I'm going to see you down there as well, yeah? Sounds like a good day, doesn't it? <laughs> I didn't think there was a question coming up, man. <laughs> Just looking at my stats, reading. <laughs> so now you have no idea what I said. Yet again, Liz, he ain't listening to me. I don't know why we have him here. He ain't listening. He just does what he wants. Honestly, <laughs> Carrie and Steve Brown is unbelievable, oh, isn't it? It won't be the first. Yeah. And it certainly won't be the last. Yeah. yeah. And he was here for rehearsal as well. Oh, dear. <laughs> Should have thrown that to Luke. But uh, I have to say, though, Liz, that that, was, that is going to be a nice thing for the Easter holidays, isn't that? Yeah, I was looking at that myself, and I mean, my, my youngest is 16, so all mine are, uh, are up and, and they're, they're out of the house now. But yeah, Too cool for school. Too cool for their dad as well. So. Um, but yeah, listen, if my kids were younger, I'd definitely come down here and, and enjoy a free day out, Brownie. Yeah. I like a free day. You do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> free days are good days. Which is probably why he Free days are good days. <laughs> <laughs> he loves a free bit. <laughs> OK, let's have a look at the fixtures, shall we, in uh, Sky Bet League One today. Another tough game, you have to say, for Cheltenham away to Barnsley. Derby against Bolton. What a game that is in the battle for automatic promotion. Exeter Burton could have ramifications around us. Lincoln has scored 11 in the last two matches and host Bristol Rovers, while Peterborough against Portsmouth, another massive one at the top. Reading Cambridge and Shrewsbury Carlisle also catch the eye, while Wigan and Wickham are the teams directly above us and host Blackpool and Northampton, respectively. And, and Brandy, let's start with the top of the table, shall we? Yeah, I'm, on, I'm all right with this one. You I'm sure? all right. I was concentrating. Liz, let's start with... Uh... <laughs> no, I, was, I was switched on. I was, I was switched on. I concentrated through that piece. Who wants to go there? Derby or Bolton? And who wants to go well, for that one? To me, that's one of those games where, if you're, in, you know when you're involved in those games and you're chasing a promotion, the victors, if it's a draw, you know, we carry on as, as you know, Barnsley might, might, might close the gap, but the victors of that one, they're suddenly walking down that tunnel, aren't they? Yeah. And it, there's a, your chest is out yeah. and you're, you're thinking, we've got, we got this. Yeah. That's a massive game. And, and actually, Portsmouth have got a tough one as well, so they might well, slip up. That's a massive one, isn't it? Yeah. Portsmouth. Yeah, and if you walk in and that's a draw or a loss to Portsmouth and you've done the job, if you're either Derby or Bolton, you know, they're the games that you love to be yeah. involved in as yeah. a player. Yeah. The big ones at the top of the table. Yeah. Just a quick word on Lincoln. 11 goals in the last two matches. Nathan has been steadfast that our draw against him was a, a more than decent result. Perhaps beginning to show that that, that is the case. Um, OK, let's have a look at the bottom half of the table now, shall we? And, and looking around us, 10 points between us and relegation, despite games in hand. Liz, are we safe? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at Brownie, Brownie says yes, so I'm going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> I will not go with Brownie. <laughs> Look, I just think it, it's more to do with the teams in between us and, and obviously the, the bottom four. But most importantly, I think the run we're on, um, I can't see us losing many games from now to the end of the season. So I think we'll, I think we'll pick up enough points to, to, to keep us clear from that, from that bottom four. So I don't, it's, it's more to do with our performances and the way we're playing at the moment um, rather than where we are on the, in the table. Brownie, are we safe? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's not just a go against Liz. I genuinely think we are. Um, <laughs> the, the, the goal the goals, uh, the difference column is, is almost like another point. So it, it, to me, that's 11. There's a lot of work to do for the clubs below us. And, and you know, you're talking about four straight wins for every team below us. And we've, we've got to lose four. Yeah. So I, I, I think we're going to add points, hopefully three more today. Um, if, if that's the case, then I think we are absolutely safe. But we, to add another, what, six to that from now to the end of the season, uh, no, I, can't, I can see us doing it, no problem at all. I hate to agree with you. Yeah, everybody yeah. does. Yeah. But, everybody does. But I do. I don't know yeah. why, I don't know what yeah. I do, but people do not L like. Listen, Nathan, the players and anybody connected with the club cannot say we are safe. No. Yeah. And Nathan can't even say that in private, yeah. but... He'll, he'll be thinking this. Yeah. Like as much as I'm talking nonsense, he, he will be thinking. No, no, no. You're, you're saying what he will be saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I think we're safe. So, so, I mean, the relegation scrap is going to be a really interesting one, isn't it? It, it feels really good that we're not quite part of that now anymore. 
really good because <laughs> yeah, we was, we've been sat here with our phones yeah, live yeah, live yeah. table and we've dropped into the relegation mm, zone yeah. and we're thinking oh my god you know the, the reality was starting to sink in that we are in a massive relegation fight here which none of us would have said at the start of the season and it was right staring us in the face so we've made the change of manager and it has got the response that everybody hoped it would get and 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 like i said it, you, you know you you it, whatever manager appointment you make is a risk Mm. And they've, they've rolled the dice, brought Nathan in, and it's it's yeah. it's had the desired effect. Right? And, and all we need to do this year, after the you know sort of come January, after that January transfer window, was stay in this league because of where we put ourselves. We've, we're we're going to do that. And uh, like I said, I hope that's us bottomed out, and I hope we build. And the side is really strong next year. It's looking good at the moment. It certainly is. Okay, just a reminder for those watching on YouTube and Twitter to get your live streaming pass. For today's match, for just £10 if you haven't, and to watch Charlton TV's production of today's game. That's it, of course, if you're living outside of the UK. Now, Connor Wickham signed last week and made an instant impact, and it was Kazenga Lawalawa signing this week. Brandy, what, what do you think of the signing? Yeah, well, I mean, it's such an impact from Connor that he's left him off the bench and put Lawalawa <laughs> <laughs> on it. <laughs> but he, he must have a niggle. Yeah, 100%. No, like, he did well when he came on. Let's be honest with you. And we all talked about, uh, you know, the flick on and, and he, he offers that presence. The weird thing about this one is, you know, Zenga's a wide player by trade, out and out wide player. And we haven't been playing with wide players. I don't know if he, I don't know if he can drop into a wing back position. I'm, I'm saying not. But does that give Nathan the flexibility to, to maybe go, you, you know, you might, you might even go a diamond. Luar Luar out on one side and a, a single striker. Diamond. Absolutely. Well, or the diamond and one stays wide and high and just a single striker and then the attacking midfield up on your left. Whichever side's open, that fullback pushes on, but or that wing back pushes on. But it gives him options, is the point. Yeah. I mean, we've got a WhatsApp here um, from Ohana, so thanks very much for, for texting in. How do you think Luar Luar is going to help the club? It, it, it's, yes. it's an interesting question where Nathan normally is a 3 5 2 or 4 diamond 2 that doesn't play wide players and the width comes from the full-backs or the wing-backs yeah. and he's a winger. The only thing I could think of is, as Brandy said, he, he could play the, the wide and left and, and obviously be a bit lopsided or it just gives him options. It gives him options. Is, is different games, there are going to be different scenarios and different formations and different people. But I think sometimes it's, it's the experience as well. I think maybe if you look at the last two signings he's brought there, they bring a little bit of experience to the team and I think if you're looking at next season, I think if, you, if you're looking to get promoted and you're looking to, to get out of the league, I feel like you're going to need a, a bit of experience around the squad. So maybe he's, he's trying to mix some of the, the younger players with, with older players and, and give that professionalism around the building. And I think, that's, I think he will bring that and, and also um, the strike we brought in. Yeah, I mean, Nathan clearly knows him. He, he's Absolutely. worked with him at Brighton and Luton as well. So yeah. that, that helps a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, and and they're, 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 I say free hits. It's a six-week contract, basically, isn't it? You know, you, you come in, you help out. What have you got? And if you show enough, if he shows enough, mm. you you might just get that extra year out of him because he's still at an age where you've got all that experience stuck in that brain, and if physically he's in a good spot, and you'll you'll, you'll see that over the next six weeks, it, you know, I, I I think there is a place in every squad for at least three or four. Really experienced players. For next season with him, isn't it? It's, it's not like, just this season. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's on trial this season for next season. Yeah, isn't that's he? what I mean. He'll be looking at him, and he'll be probably saying to the club, "Look, have a little look at him. He'll bring him on. Um, hopefully, he is he, he impressed. But I'm sure the manager will be looking at, at having him in part of the squad next year. Yeah, I mean, I, I know you would have heard, but he probably wasn't listening. Um, uh, Nathan, <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, saying in his press conference that he could be in the moon for a year, and he is still an excellent athlete, and he'd be absolutely fine. I mean, I used to hate those type of people that would be injured for six months, come back, look like they've never been injured at all. Yes. But, but it's on a serious point of view, especially in the way the, the sort of football is nowadays, where you have to be very athletic. Yeah, yeah. It's really important. So athlete, experience, it ticks a lot all, of boxes. For me, it ticks all the boxes, including, as Brian, said, experience as well. Now, the manager would have looked at him. If he's, not a good, if he's not a good character, he wouldn't have brought him in as well. So that's one of the things you'll probably be looking at him. Can he? Can some of his his experience rub off on the, on the younger players? Um, and it's always a good sign when a manager brings a play in a player from a team he's had before. Um, he wouldn't bring a player in if he if he wasn't good in and around the building as as well as being able to offer something on the pitch. Mm. 
Okay, um, can you give a shout out to Raymond? He's a big Charlton fan, and that's from Ben. So Raymond, hope you're in, enjoying the show and hopefully you'll enjoy the game as well. Nick in India, watching the game from Bandrol in Himachal Pradesh. I'm sure I haven't said that properly. <laughs> <but> <laughs> <laughs> Is there any chance you <laughs> every chance? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you Reds. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we love the international side, but at least let me be able to read it properly. Um, so, so what are we thinking in, t in today's game then? How, how, how would you approach this game, Liz? It's, it's one that's not an easy away game, but the way they've been playing? Just the same. I think you go out there, you, there should be an understanding now between all the players. The manager, they should understand what the manager wants as well. So I don't think he has to say much now. I think he just has to reassure them that obviously maintain your standards that you that you've put yourself that you put a pedestal so far um and just keep that up just keep on doing the same and and, and say be consistent and be ruthless mm. let's have a look at uh, the teams both teams shall we um just as they're they're about to come out as well obviously we said unchanged for us in in terms of fleetwood uh, have we got a certain Jaden stockley there yeah, we yeah. certainly have indeed yeah. he's been he's been Finding a back of the net recently as well, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, they 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 predominantly play a three as well, but they do flip between a three four three and a three five two. So I think I think the important thing today, the formation side of it, I, I don't think is an issue. I think the conditions, if you look at that pitch, we've got to do the basics well and make sure that we play to our strengths like we have been. We we sort of I felt like we came away from it in the first twenty minutes last week. It didn't quite work. I think we'll see us get on the front foot nice and quick. Uh, uh, will condense the space from back to front and press in their half and try and, you know, if they're going to manoeuvre the ball about, I don't think this pitch is going to be massively conducive for that. Mm. So there's a mistake to maybe pounce upon in the early stages, but you certainly play to the conditions first and foremost and, and, and cut out the errors if we can. But they are having the best unbeaten league run of the season, five games drawing four, which I suppose tells you exactly why mm. they're down there. But Charlie Adam, the manager, yeah. has come in and, and done a good job so far, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, they were bang in trouble when he walked through the door and he's, he, he's stabilised. And uh, like we always say, what do you do when you walk into a club? You make yourself a bit more difficult Lost to beat. Lost just two of the last yeah. 11. Yeah, but they've only won one of eight. They're drawing far too many games and that's not going to get them out of trouble, Scott. They've got to start turning the draws into wins. Um, they would have liked to have met us probably two months ago. Yeah. You know, like we've been saying about teams coming here, oh, we'd have liked to meet them. I think they'll be saying that about us. We're very much on the front foot at the moment.